Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the final module in our course. This module, module 8, is called Applying Chemical Ideas and it's a really great opportunity for you to start putting together all of that chemistry content that you've been gathering um, over the last three terms in order to focus your attention on some of the sp specific ways in which we apply our chemical knowledge. This is the first video in this particular module and we've just called this one Monitoring the Environment. Specifically, what we need to do in this um, first video is just to analyse the need for monitoring the environment. So why should we be monitoring the environment? Well, there's a number of important reasons why we would do that. And of course, this relates to both a particular chemical process as well as wider issues around the um, local <clears throat> and global implications of chemical processes. So what are some of the reasons why this might be a, a good or a bad thing? Well, I think, of course, the first thing is that um, the monitoring may re reveal uh, an issue of too many. One of the things that we notice is that for a process like combustion, which is such a common process, the process of combustion is actually dependent on the reactants. Specifically, combustion reactions are um, directly related to the concentration of oxygen that's available uh, when a fuel is uh, undergoing combustion. So this concentration of oxygen leads us to either incomplete or complete combustion. And of course, once we've had a look at um, those two processes, we know that there is going to be a difference in either the um, particulate buildup or the buildup of a greenhouse gas. In both cases, water is a product, but in the case of incomplete combustion, we can have uh, carbon being released as a product in the form of soot, or we can have carbon monoxide, which is quite a dangerous gas being released. However, if the concentration of oxygen is high, um, or we change the nature of the fuel, then we get or are more likely to get complete combustion. And that's going to produce water, but it's also going to produce carbon dioxide. Now, even then, in a more desired um, product, we can still have a problem of buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We now know there are links between this and other important um, uh, greenhouse gases that contribute to a real problem at the, um, at the moment around global warming. And so there are consequences for f too much of this sort of thing being released into the um, environment. We can also have issues of too few. One of the things that we did when we went to the Sydney water treatment is we, we had a look at hard versus soft water. What we realized is that hard water is characterized by the presence of calcium and magnesium ions. Now we don't want a lot of these ions because if there are too many of them, then the water is very hard. It can um, uh, lead to precipitation in the piping. It can also um, mean that it's very hard to lather. However, if the concentration of these is too low, then we can also find that there can be some uh, erosion, that actually some of the water can actually start to eat away at the, um, uh, at the piping. And so therefore, sometimes part of the process of water purification is around the addition of calcium ions in order to raise that concentration of calcium and reduce um, the prospects of damage being done at some uh, point further down the line. So there's problems occasionally with too much and there's problems also with too few. Of course, the main consideration is economically when we are considering costs, we have to consider things like yield. We have to consider things like profit. 
we have to consider things like uh, waste. Oops. And as a consequence of all of these things, there are going to be economic factors associated with what type of chemicals, perhaps even the choice of a catalyst, whether to use one, whether the cost associated with that is actually going to be um, uh, compensated by the increase in uh, time to reach yields and so on. And of course, if the system that we're looking at is an equilibrium system, then there may be other factors that we've got to consider, such as high pressure may be a really important factor, but it might also mean high enough pressure may increase uh, the risk associated with safe practice. So each of these um, different processes needs to be looked at in a, a quite comprehensive way for us to be able to analyse a range of different factors associated with different chemical processes. There are always going to be four, often, four key considerations that we're going to need to think about whenever we are looking at any chemical process. So again, I want you to think about the fact that we're going to look at a number of chemical processes or reactions, some of which have commercial implications, many of which will actually, and Consider these from all the key aspects that we have, particularly in relation to these four key factors. So the first one is always chemical, and chemical is often related to yield, which is often related to reaction conditions. So if our goal is to maximize yield, then we want to have a look at the reaction conditions, make sure that we think about things like pressure, make sure we think about things like temperature, uh, make sure we look at our, uh, how we obtain our reactants, how we uh, might dispose of products. It may well be that we have a product that is desired, but we might also have a, a byproduct or a waste product that we don't desire. What are we going to do with that? How are we going to deal with that? Uh, and so on. How are we going to balance all of these things? And of course, um, it keep uh, people safe that are working on industrial sites. As I mentioned in the previous video, environmental is important. We, we need to be very aware about pollutants that are going into both our air and also into our water. Sometimes heat is as much a problem as the specific chemicals themselves. So if we're releasing uh, carbon as a result of incomplete combustion, that's a problem. If we're releasing heavy metals into our waterways, um, that's a problem. And sometimes just thermal pollution as we use hot water uh, to generate electricity, for example, may also find its way back into the atmosphere or into the waterways. And that too can just change the balance in different ecosystems, particularly um, because this often affects uh, the uh, plants and animals in a particular area. Economic is also an important factor because here we're trying to maximize profit. And if we're trying to maximize profit, then we want high yield and low cost. And so there are a number of different decisions that may have to be made around um, increasing our yields, but without um, having our costs spiral out. Socio-cultural is often uh, linked back to the environment, so this may be the um, local society that's living in an area around an industrial site, for example. It may be something that has global implications. It may be uh, chemicals in the soils. It may be something that is in the waterways. Maybe it's something we specifically added. So, for example, if we look again at the example that we had for the um, water treatment, part of what we do with uh, water treatment for drinking water is to actually put things in there for the benefit of people, such as uh, fluorides uh, or chlorides, either for dental health or to kill microorganisms that would have a negative impact on the people who are drinking the water. So 
These are all the different factors that we want to consider when we are looking at monitoring reactions and especially when we're looking at monitoring the environment to see what sort of impact our chemical processes are having on the environment. We're going to look at three different areas when we look through this topic, one of which is looking very much at our waterways and the different um, uh, ions that are present in water. Another is looking at our organic compounds and how we can identify different organic groups. And then we'll put everything together at the end to um, have a look at a few case studies where each of these factors we can pull out in a bit more specific detail. So I hope this has been a good little overview. There's certainly a lot more specific detail to come. Thanks for watching.